Imagine what life would have been like on the battlefield. The bullets hitting the ground, gunfire spewing out of the tanks. It was basically mayhem on the battle ridge. The men that were risking their lives were pride and honor. Millions of soldiers fighting back for their country. It was a time of stress for many nations worldwide. People all across the globe, asked to fight for their country, served time to take back what was once theirs. Active workers and farmers taken from their homes to fight in the war to end all wars, otherwise known as World War I. Back in 1914, the death of Franz Ferdinand created a domino effect of countries, declaring war on each other. Once Britain joined in with Russia and France, Canada had automatically joined in the, on the war. It was a very small country at this time, with only around 8 million civilians living in the Great White North. Britain had asked Canada to give them help, extra troops to fight in the war, to aid them against their attacks against Germany and Austria. Of the 8 million people in Canada, almost 600,000 of them offered to join the army, sail overseas, and fight with the Allies. One man out of this huge group was a man by the name of John Arthur Harper, whose story I am going to share with you in this podcast. Harper was born in Norwich, Ontario in 1888. He was the eldest son of Henry Harper, a successful businessman in the city of Norwich. He had a brother, Norman, who also served in the military after John's death, and a sister who worked with John before he left for the army. Harper would go to Dundas Public Elementary School and High Schools, and would enter the service in the Bank of Montreal in 1906, later meeting up with his sister and work together until 1915, when John Arthur Harper would enter the military. He joined the 47th Battalion Infirmary, where he would train and compete in Ontario before having the honor of becoming a lieutenant. Canadians had a name for themselves in the First World War, being ferocious and courageous in the battles they faced. In Harper's time in the war, he wrote two books about his experiences as a soldier and lieutenant, both written in 1916. They were really just diary entries, but they were long enough to be books. Many of the quotes used in his passages include what the culture and identity of the Canadian Army was like. He writes, quote, We were a passionate group, full of pride and courage on the bridge. He explained how the battles were going to be intense, writing, quote, These battles we are going to encounter are going to put Canadians to the test. Fast forwarding two years, John Harper began to get his first bit of action in the Battle of Vimy Ridge. The Battle of Vimy Ridge was one of Canada's most significant battles of the war. Located in northern France, this area was tightly under German control, and the Allies needed to capture it in order to advance to more German ground. Harper and his legion, the 47th Bastion, set foot on the battlefront as soon as troops were deployed. Harper and his legion would step in with thousands of other Canadians protecting the lives of the Allies. Harper was probably feeling anxious as wartime was about to commence, but he stood tall and triumphed towards the ridge. Sadly, once they entered the ridge, Harper took a fatal headshot and fell to the ground, dying instantly. He is now buried in the Vimy Memorial in Pas de Calais, France. Harper was only 28 years old at the time. The war efforts of Harper didn't really help Canadians in the battle, as he died once he stepped foot on the battleground. But perhaps his fellow soldiers felt differently. Losing a lieutenant like that must have affected the lives of his soldiers in Harper's Bastion, and probably set off for revenge after his death. Harper represented the Canadian identity very well, being brave, outgoing, and courageous in his time in the war. Although his time was cut short, his presence was felt in the war and affected many lives of the troops on the battleground. Rest in peace, John Arthur Harper.